Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. This one will be doing part two of the RPG Systems tutorial series. We'll be continuing from last time where we implemented the character and blend tree from Mixamo. Uh, and we'll now be writing the movement code for the player. We'll also need to set up a camera using Cinemachine, which is a, an add-on by Unity themselves, or like a part of Unity's company works on Cinemachine, which is all to do with cameras and like cinematic stuff. We'll be using their free look camera, which is really useful for basically orbiting the player by, you know, moving your mouse around up and down. And then from that, we can write some code to move based on the relative uh, rotation of the camera. So if we walk, for if we hold forwards and then rotate our mouse to the right and then keep walking forwards, we'll now be walking to the right, if you get what I mean. You'll, you'll get it as we go along. This is how like a lot of uh, over the shoulder um, movement systems are done. That's not to mean, that's not to say we can't come back to this in the future and, you know, improve on it or whatever. But we just want to set it up now so our character can move around. We can worry about uh, subtle things later, like, for example, when you're speaking to an NPC, you don't want, you know, your movement keys to actually move you. So we need to do like a state machine system for that. But that's further down the line. For this video, we're just going to get some simple movement code going. But before we get into that, I need to thank my patrons, so special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Boudere, Thomas Huster, Remy Bowden, and Phil Bourne. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link is in the description below. If you can't, then it would be appreciated if you could follow me on Twitch, Twitter, all the social media links down below. That would be greatly appreciated, but now let's get into the video. Okay, so last time we, you know, as I said in the intro, set up the character and the blend tree. Uh, if we press play, they'll go from the T pose to the idle state because that's what his uh, animator tells him to do. So if we go back to the base layer, he's in locomotion. And locomotion is just uh, three different animations that we blend between based on the values. So if I drag the animator to the side, go into speed percentage and say, you're now at 0.5, you're walking. And now at one, you're running. But we need to actually make the player move and, you know, not have to manually set those animator values uh, in the editor, in, you know, the inspector. We want to do that in code. So let's write in our scripts folder. I'll make a folder perhaps called movement. So we'll make a movement folder. And we'll create a script. For now, we'll just call it movement controller. We'll think about that later if we need to refactor it. But movement controller will do for now. Okay, so go ahead and open the script up in whatever IDE you're using. I'm using Visual Studio Code at the moment. I know I've used Visual Studio like normal for a long time, but I'm trying Visual Studio Code at the moment. Uh, obviously, there's no you know changes you'll have to do from what I do necessarily. It's just a different way to code. You do it in Notepad if you really want to. Um, so in the movement controller, what do we need? We're going to need to basically take input and move the player. Now, there's this um, design principle in game development, which is really good, called the single responsibility principle, which is that every class does one job and does it really well, but as I said, does one job. So we shouldn't technically be taking input and moving in the same script, because then obviously it'd be very hard to do stuff with input. Because if we wanted to tweak input, we'd have to tweak this class and we might mess up the movement. You want to do it all isolated, but we don't have time in this video to do all of that. So we're just gonna simply put the input in here and then in a later video, refactor it out so we can take input externally. Um, so what we need is we're gonna need to take input and move a character controller. So actually let's go back into Unity click on the player after it compiles the new class I just made and we're going to add on obviously the uh, new movement controller but I also want to add on a character controller so my movement controller is going to you know handle moving the character controller essentially um, now let's press apply to the prefab and inside the prefab I'm just going to shift around because I always like having the unity classes at the top and my custom ones at the bottom um, so we need to effectively move this thing there's there's a built-in function for moving it we just need to pass in the data uh, but as you see on the uh, object because of the origin the origin of the humanoid model is at the base where the feet is now that makes sense that's what you usually do so when you drag an object in you want the origin to actually be at the base of the object most of the time um, if it's like a projectile then maybe you want the origin at the center but for a humanoid it makes sense to put it at the bottom so when i drag the prefab in the feet are on the floor essentially and it's good for like building levels if you've got objects scenery objects you want the origin not to be at the center of the object to be at the base that's just a quick tip so we, we need to like basically tweak these character controller settings to fit our player so i'm going to go with a y of um one obviously as you see putting the y up to one seems to make sense there um the radius you'd want to tweak that to how you know how thick the player is so i'm going to say that's roughly right maybe 0.25 it's a nice number um height two yeah we might want to make it like 1.8 it depends how like precise you want to be and obviously if you tweak the height then you need the character controller to be at the feet so it's just up to you to tweak these values i'll be back in a minute when i've tweaked them 
Okay, I didn't really do that much tweaking. I basically just put the center as 0.9 and the height as uh, 1.8. If the center is half the height, then it's going to be um, on the floor, basically. If Assuming it's at the origin, like that's perfectly on the floor because it's exactly half. And obviously that fits pretty well on the head. You know, you can make it a bit bigger than the player if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter, so long as the feet is, you know, the bottom of the collider. And now we can go back. As you see, we did it in the prefab, so it's there in the scene. Looks pretty good to me. Um, usually games don't account for arms for hitboxes. Um, well, they might, but then you'd have to make multiple co uh, colliders and everything. Keep in mind, this is this character controller is primarily for the actual movement, not for getting hit. You can use that for getting hit. It counts as a collider, but I'd highly recommend... And what we're probably going to do is make uh, separate colliders for actually getting hit. Um, but for now, we'll leave it like this. We've got a character controller. Go back to the code. We need to reference it. And for a movement controller to even work, we need a character controller. So one way to make sure like we enforce that is to type require component type of and then the type character controller. So now Unity will only let us use this script on a class that has a character controller already. And if it doesn't, it'll add it for us. And if we try and remove the character controller with this script on, it won't let us. So this is pretty good. Um, and now what else are we going to need? We're also going to need an animator no matter what. So we're going to say require component uh, type of animator, right? So it says this thing's also going to have to have an animator on it, which is true because we need to set those values. And these are actually variables we need to get component of in our start method. So in start, we want to get the character control and animator and cache it. So for that, we need to actually have a private variable to store them. So we're going to have a private character controller. Let's call it controller, maybe. OK. And then we also want a private animator. Let's call that animator. And then in start, we want to get them both. So we'll say controller is equal to um, get component controller. Oh, well, animator controller. Animator, sorry. Uh, wait, no. The controller is obviously a character controller. I don't know why I said animator. I'm getting muddled up there. And then on the next line, we'll get the animator. So animator equals get component animator. And we're guaranteed that we're going to get those references because we've told the, sc uh, the script that it's not going to work without them. That's pretty much all we need to do in start for now, at least. And we're going to need some other variables to like work with. So, for example, if we add force to the player we're not going to use a rigid body to handle the force or at least i don't plan on it you know we want to handle it ourselves because it allows us to do more things of it and um especially with enemies you don't want to use rigid bodies to actually have the force and if you do you have to do an awkward workaround for it so we'll, we'll get to that eventually but the reason is because with nav mesh components the ai pathfinding you can't for example hit them with like a knock up ability and have them be knocked off the nav mesh you have to disable the nav mesh agent and like control it manually or with physics. And then when they get back to the ground, you want to re-enable the nav mesh. That's what people would usually do. They disable the nav mesh and re-enable it, but we'll sort that out later. What we need to do here is in the update, we actually want to um, essentially handle like external forces such as gravity, I guess. But I think before we do that, we should just do our normal input movement. Just assume there is no gravity for now um, and just you know, move the player on a flat ground. So for that, we're going to need some other variables at the top. We're going to say we want a serialized field, private float movement speed. I'm going to set that equal to three as a default value. Um, we're going to need a private float. Um, it, it really depends. Uh, we're going to use speed smooth time. The way I originally made my character controller, I've looked around so many things on the internet to find like the best way. I mean, there's never a best way, but like I've looked to find what way I prefer. And I don't know if you've heard of this YouTuber. There's a YouTuber called Sebastian uh, Sebastian Larg. I'll like link his uh, channel below if you want. He showed how to set up a character controller with like this blending smooth tree. That's where I first saw about it. So if you see some, you know, bits from that, then that's where I got it from. Whereas I'll actually be uh, tweaking it quite a bit because it's not exactly how I wanted it to work, but it was a very useful tutorial to get into this. Um, what we need is we also need now to have this variable, this um, speed percentage. We want to store that. We don't want to have to type it in a string whenever we need it down here because then we could type it wrong. And if we type it wrong, we have to replace it in loads of places. And if we ever want to change it, we have to replace it in multiple places. It makes sense to have a variable at the top for it. So what Unity do themselves in their example project that I saw is they'd write their statics down here. So private static, because there's only one of it. It doesn't need to be separate for each class. Read only, because it can never be changed after you assign it. It's an integer. 
it's a hash and then you would this is just the the way you would set it up and then you would put the name which is speed percentage so speed percentage equals animator so the animator class has a static function called string to hash so we can type in the string which is speed percentage like so and just leave it like that so what that's going to do is when we compile it's going to um, ask the animator class to turn this string into a hash which is just an integer it's just um, numbers essentially um, and that's much faster for the animator to actually access it ra rather than string referencing so it's actually a slight performance increase I, I say slight I don't know if it's actually slight or it might be quite a big performance increase but um, the point is it just makes more sense and if we ever need to change the name of that variable we just change it up at the top okay and then now down here what we need to do is uh, we also need reference to the camera that's something else we need to um, store so we're going to store a transform so down here we're going to say like um, I'll do it below there private transform uh, main camera transform equals null and then in start we want to say main camera transform is equal to camera dot main dot transform and what else do we want not much else here in update we want to uh, we want to move basically so update move and we can write our own move function so I go down here private void move now this will be probably shift around shifted around quite a bit when we add the state machine and doing input externally for now move is just gonna be what do we do when we move so first of all we want to take an input right so we're gonna say vector to movement input equals a new vector to but now we need to um, pass in those values so for now we're gonna say input dot get axis raw and then the name which is horizontal comma input dot get axis raw whoops get axis raw vertical make sure you spell it correctly um, for the sake of this I can put it onto a new line so it's easier to read on here so what we're doing is we are um, making a vector 2 which is just two two numbers with our input on the horizontal and the vertical axis and this is basically to allow us to know you know how much do we want to move left and right and then forwards and backwards and then we also want to uh, normalize this so I'm gonna put dot normalized on the end normalizing is the way of basically think about it this way if you want to move forwards that might be one zero but if you want to move to the right it'd be zero um, one it depends how we've set it up if you forwards backwards left right the point is if you want to move diagonally you would have one and one so you'd be moving forwards and right which would actually travel more distance than if you just walk walk forwards or right so if you're going diagonally you want to normalize it which returns it with a magnitude of one so no matter what kind of direction you put in it, you'll still move in the same speed if you were using like a um, controller for example and you had like an analog input um, you don't want like certain angles of the input to move faster than others basically um, that's what normalization is if you didn't know and then vector free forward so we want to get the forward vector of the camera just cache it here so main camera transform dot forward whoops uh, forward and then we're also going to do that for uh, right equals main camera transform right and we actually want to take these vectors and set the y to zero because we don't care what the camera's y rotation is um, or well so when we take the vector of their forward and right we don't care about the y we just care about the x and the z so we're going to say forward dot y is equal to zero and forward uh, sorry right dot y is equal to zero and then we want to normalize those vectors there because we've changed one of their values they're not actually going to have a magnitude of one anymore so uh, forward dot normalize um, normalize I can't because I'm British it's got an S but obviously this is American so it doesn't uh, normalize so we normalize the two vectors and then we need to now basically work out um, you know how much do we want to move essentially so I'm gonna call this uh, like desired move direction it's gonna be forward times by um, movement input dot y plus right 
times by uh, movement input dot x. So basically, forward times the y input plus right times the x input. And then we're going to normalize that as well. Just make sure everything's normalized, otherwise what will happen is your um, end calculations will be wrong. There might be ways to optimize this, like micro-optimizations, but to be honest, uh, this works just fine, and we can always come back to that. If any of you notice any optimizations, then feel free to let me know. This will be on my GitHub page, the link's down below, so you can actually, like, you know, look through the code and, you know, study it, I guess, if you wanted to. Um, so now we need to actually rotate the player as well as, like, just moving them. So we're going to say, um, so long as desired um, move road, move direction is not vector 3.0 because you get you get a warning if it is zero basically you only want to rotate if you're actually moving um, we're going to say the rotation of the player is equal to quaternion which is to do with rotations I'm not going to get into the maths behind that slurp it sounds stupid but it's basically to uh, li linearly or like sorry not linearly sphere spherically because we could use dot lerp but we're going to use dot slurp um, to interpolate between two values. So we want to basically rotate from our current value, which is um, transform.rotation, to um, looking, so quaternion.look rotation. We wish to look in the direction we're moving, if you get what I mean. So whichever way we're moving, we want to rotate to face that direction. So desired move direction. And then you pass in a value at the end just for like how fast it does that rotation or how slow. So I'm going to put 0.1f. Um, I mean, you could put that as a variable at the top, but I'm happy with that value, so I'm just going to leave that as that. Um, obviously, I need to zoom in so you guys can read what I'm doing. If you do need to see the whole thing, as I said, you can get the link below for my GitHub page. Um, and then finally, once we've done all this, we want to actually move the player. I mean, actually, well, we kind of want to um, calculate the speed, I guess. So what we should probably do is we should um, now get float target speed is equal to our movement speed times by um, our movement direction, oh, so movement um, input dot magnitude. So the magnitude of movement input essentially, um, it's going to be zero or one if we're moving or not really, <laughs> that's basically it. Um, and then we want to change our current speed. The reason we're going to have a current speed uh, is because maybe we um, are walking into a wall. Even though we're holding forwards, we actually don't want to, um, you know, increase our move speed in that direction because it'll just like we're running on the spot into the wall. So we actually do need a another variable at the top. So let me just see. Yeah. So let, let's just add some more variables. We, we might not even use them all right now but we definitely will use them as we improve this controller. So we're gonna have a, let's say a private vector free, actually no, private float um, velocity y, that'll be for doing gravity stuff, e equals zero f. Uh, private float speed smooth velocity equals zero. And uh, private float current speed equals zero. I'm just defaulting these to zero. You don't have to. It does that automatically, but I'm used to it. Um, those variables, you'll see when they're used, and you can look up on documentation exactly how each function works, but I don't really have time to basically talk through every single function here. Um, essentially, smoothing values are just for, you know, going between two different values, um, but not just snapping to them, because it would make the game not look nice, right? If you're going from wa wa uh, walking to sprinting, you don't want to just like snap the animation from the walk animation to the running. You want to, um, I mean, some games do that, but you probably want to, you know, just go between them a bit smoother than that. Uh, so we want to set the current speed here. So current speed is equal to mathf.smoothdamp. So smoothdamp um, is another one of those where you smoothly go between values. So we're going to basically go between our current speed. Oh, sorry, no, we're going to damp the current speed. So we're going to change the current speed to be um, the target speed. But that would be, I mean, maybe you want to just set the current speed to the target speed. But you usually don't. You actually want it to be smoother. So we're going to say ref, which is a keyword in C sharp. If you don't know what ref is, then, you know, go look that up. That's just a, uh, I don't think it's limited to C sharp, but it is a C sharp thing. It might be in some other languages too. We want to pass in spe speed, uh, smooth velocity, and speed. Um, smooth time, which are some variables we wrote at the top, and then put the semicolon on the end, 
Um, and finally, once we've calculated our speed, we can actually move. So we want to say character controller, well, controller even, dot move. I'm going to pass in uh, our desired move direction times by our target. Um, oh, wait, that's meant, is it by our target speed? Be by our current speed um, times time dot delta time. The reason for the time dot delta time, if you guys don't know, is that makes the speed frame independent. Because normally, the, well, the update function is called every frame. So if you have a higher frame rate, you'd call move more often, meaning you'd move faster if you had a higher frame rate. But obviously, you don't want that. So time dot delta time is how long it took to run the last frame. So if your game's running fast, you'd have a lower delta time, meaning you move less every frame. And if you've got a slow computer, Time delta time would be bigger, meaning you move more per frame, which equivalates. You basically it balances out, so no matter your frame rate, you'd still move the same distance. Um, and now we just let that compile, and back in Unity, we have our move speed, 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 move time two. Let's press play and just see what happens. So if I, hopefully everything works there. So as you see, if I hold, depending on which direction I'm moving in, the player rotates to it and moves uh, to that amount. And obviously, their animator isn't changing just yet. So we need to actually change that as well. So we've got the animator already stored in here. We just need to call it. So we can say animator.setFloat, because that's what we're doing, um, hash speed percentage, because that's what we're uh, you know passing in. And then um, the way Sebastian set this up is he had sprinting involved, and we probably will end up adding sprinting. For now, I'll just assume we're not going to. So we're just going to have it go between idle and walking. So we're going to say 0 0.5, which is um, going to basically make it go from you know uh, idle to walking we're, because we're not doing sprinting just yet. As I said, sprinting would be one there. Um, so don't worry about that part. We'll uh, replace that in a future tutorial. But for now, we want to say move, movement um, input dot magnitude, and then over here it's uh, speed smooth time, and you also want to at the end add in uh, time dot delta time because I don't think it does that by default, but even if it does, it's fine because you know we're just gonna pass it through anyway. So now what should happen is based on um, our input, it should change the animator. But as I said, we might tweak that around to make it look a bit nicer, but I think it's gonna look all right anyway. Um, all right, what's going on here? Parameter hash doesn't exist. So I must have typed something wrong at the top. Let's go check. So I put speed space percentage on here. It's just speed percentage. So as you see, if you type something wrong, you just change it in that one place. Don't have to touch in the rest of your code and it's absolutely fine. So that's quite handy. Now, when we move, you see that it goes from idle in all these different directions to um, the walking. And when you stop walking, it goes back like so. So now our character is actually moving around uh, obviously, it feels a bit awkward at the moment, and we're not actually following the player. Um, so we do need to set up the camera to end off this video, and I actually don't think we have time really to sit and fiddle with the camera settings. So that can be your job, you know, after this video, is to go sort out your camera settings. I'm just going to show you how to set up the camera as a basic and a thing, and then you can tweak every other value you want. So let's just do this really quickly. You want to go to um, Have we not installed Cinemachine uh, Package Manager? So I've just currently got Text Mesh Pro and Package Manager. So you're going to want to add Cinemachine. So you want to go into All and look for Cinemachine, Install. I'm going to just skip while this installs. Okay, now it's installed. It says Cinemachine there with a tick. So we can go to Cinemachine, create a free look camera. Uh, just call it like, um, I don't know, camera underscore free look. So if you go back to your main camera now, you'll have a Cinemachine brain on it, which basically means uh, how Cinemachine works is all the cameras you import don't actually have camera components on them. They simply control the main camera depending on which one's in charge. So let's say uh, for now, well, the main camera is what we see through, but the camera free look is what controls it. So what we want to do if we look through here, now the camera is in the ground and it's just at the player's feet. So we want to say um, follow the player and look at the player. I'm going to turn off round robin, uh, common lens, yeah, there's so many settings on here, I don't even know what half of them do, but I know what some of them do. We want to invert Y and X if you want it to be like a normal player controller. Um, so make sure Y is checked and X it isn't. Simple follow of word up, 
simple follow with world up, sorry. But now we're looking at the player's feet because that's where the origin is. So you want to add an offset to all of the things. So maybe you want to, um, I'm also going to turn off the damping here. So we go zero, zero, uh, zero, oops, zero, zero. Once you've like disabled the things you don't need, you can then start re-enabling them if you want. So I'm turning off all these smoothings. Just note some of them have minimum values like this. Uh, has look heads moving has a mini minimum value of three. Uh, I'm going to turn off the soft zone for now. I'll just make it work like normally. So turn off all these 0 0.8s. And now I'm also going to set this 0 0.5 on all of them that are 0.6. And up here there's a 0 0.5. That's fine. So finally, we want to actually set the offset. So for example, um, how high up do we want to look for the player? Well, you see what happens is we've got a top rig, a middle rig, and a bottom rig. And currently, by default, you're looking through the middle rig. So I'm going to say for the middle rig, the Y is maybe 1.6. But ideally, I want that to be the same for all of them. So if I put that as 1.6 there and 1.6 there, that's cool. So now if I press play, keep in mind, your game can actually kind of lag if you're uh, looking through the camera. Like if you have this on your screen, this um, grid view, and you're on the camera free look selected, just, just click off it and it runs a bit better. So now if I move my camera to the right, we go to the right, left, we go to the left. I can move, and if I hold forwards and move my camera around, we actually move relative to the player. Uh, relative to the camera, sorry. So all the movement is relative. Um, so what we need to do, uh, there's a few more settings we can change. I'm going to leave main, uh, most of it up to you. So for example, things you can change here, you can tweak these uh, orbits. So if you look back in the scene, you'll see the orbits in these red lines here. It's quite hard to see on the video probably. But you can tweak the bottom rig's height like so, and the radius. Um, so yeah, I want you to basically tweak these values to get it just right, just keep playing and testing. If you do the testing in play mode, you can actually check this save during play box. So when you leave play mode, all the settings are saved. Um, just make sure to turn it off afterwards in case you don't want it afterwards. Um, a simple follow with world up, there's some other follow types that you can try and just mess around with and just see what works for you. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. I hope you got your character controller working and orbiting working. If you've got any problems, then feel free to ask down below. Uh, help me on social media would mean a lot. Uh, tune into my Twitch streams to see game development progress there and stuff like that. Um, I'll see you in the next video on Monday, uh, streaming tomorrow and then nothing Saturday. So hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye, guys. Thanks for watching.